Okay, we're chilling again because of reasons. So, my nice movie. I haven't watched this movie in a long time. Um, but I did watch it. The Aviator, Mr. Uh, DiCaprio. Uh, for his, is it his second, um... I guess was it his second Academy Award nomination? There. We can be next to him. Um, let's see. I think it was... Let's see. Maybe not. Maybe. Wait, let's see. A little... No, yes. I think it was a second Oscar nomination for uh, Leo DiCaprio as the aviator. He was... Uh, 20-something. I don't know. I don't know his age. Um, it's about the young life of uh, Howard Hughes. It says director and aviator Howard Hughes, late twenties to the early the mid forties, so twenty years, and it's kind of like his life, uh, like when his OCD was really happening. I do remember that, and like, and his obsession was coming, and he was having a mental breakdown, uh, all that jazz, and it was really sad, and it was really cool to watch. There is a, there's a moment though when like. Um, he, as a person who does not like my food to touch that much, I've gotten way better at it, but as a little kid, if that food touched, I wouldn't eat it. Um, certain food, not all food. Um, but he's, like, separating his food, and he's at the dinner and stuff, and Arrow of Flynn, played by Jude Law, lovely Jude Law, comes, and he, like, takes his food, like, off his plate, like, peas and stuff, and, like, the facial expression that Leonardo DiCaprio made, I was just like, I feel you, bro. I get it. That's so rude. Um, I love Errol Flynn, though. He's a wonderful actor. Um, but yeah, this is... Scorsese. I just make sure I don't want to say the wrong name. Scorsese movie. Another classic. Um, and it's really just... Let's see what IMDb says. Biopic of Bill and Nair. Howard Hughes starts with early filmmaking years, owner of RKO Studios. If focusing on promoting and designing aircrafts, Hughes was a risk taker, spending seven fortunes on designing experimental aircrafts and eventually funding the TWA, a rival to Pan Am Airlines, owned by his great rival, June John Juan Tripp. When Tripp's political senior rival, Owen Brewster, accuses Hughes of being a war, pro war profiteer, it's Hughes who gains the upper hand and he so in many women in his lives include a long relationship with Catherine Hepburn. He was a germaphobe and had mental illness. OCD. That's what IMDb's thing says. It's PG-13, really. No. Um, and it's interesting, uh, Kate Blanchett's Catherine Hepburn, and it's amazing because she's Kate Blanchett. It's seriously, like almost every movie says <laughs> more than we expect it. Leonardo is wonderful. John C. Riley is amazing because he's John C. Riley and he's very underrated. Kate Beckinsale's great. Alan Alda's in it. I love Alan Alda. Uh, Alec Baldwin's in it. I don't remember him in it at all, actually. I'm, I, I like Alec Baldwin. I just. Yeah. Ian Holm is awesome in it. He's very. Uh, Ian Holm. See, Danny Houston. I love Danny Houston so much. Uh, Gwen Stefani. I don't even remember her in it. She played Jane Harlow. Okay, Adam Scott. Adam Scott's in it. Wow. Brent Spine. That happened. Brent Spiner's in it. I think I remember him. Sorry, I just wanted to pick it up. I guess. And it breaks. Um, it didn't break. It just came apart. Um, I remember Brent Spiner. Robert Gross. I mean. Oliver Platt was in this. I don't know, but it. I haven't watched it for a long time. A lot of these will be like that. Willem Dafoe is in it. I knew that. Yes, Willem Dafoe is in it. Um, Rufus Rain, right? Wow. Basically, if 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 you wanted, if you were good and you were in Scorsese, that's like the top, right? Scorsese. It's awesome. Uh, you know he did not win for this. Um. 
But yeah, it's just... It's unique, it's good, it's... I don't know how much fictionalized it's been. Um, but as always, the Andrew Carpenter does a great job. I've never been a... Oh my god, Leonardo DiCaprio is the best thing ever. Like, he's a wonderful actor. I just think he takes himself a little too seriously. Um, outside of movies, not in movies, like, I get it. But, like, any interview or whatever, he's very, like, stoic and serious and kind of, like... I don't know, he keeps himself kind of big-headed. Like, I don't know. But he might be super nice. I have no idea. And the fact that he doesn't sign autographs for fans is kind of really rude. Like, he wants some of you to pay for them. That's just obnoxious, in my opinion. I get not being able to for, like, time-wise and stuff, but, like, oh, pay for it and I'll sign it. Like, that's not right, in my opinion. Okay, that little rant over. Um, but he's a wonderful talent. He deserved an Oscar a long time ago. He deserved an Oscar nomination for Django Unchanged. I will always say that. That is his one of his best performances. Revenant, he deserved it, too. Um... But yeah, and you know, Scorsese uses a bunch of these actors in other movies, and uh, Ian Holm, I don't know, they need to do more. I know they're getting up there in years, but still. I don't even remember Adam Scott at all. Okay, well, let's see, Aviator. Uh, I do remember him being like naked with a beard, watching his movies over and over and over again. Okay, the next movie is going to make me sad. Um... Like every movie I have of his, it's they're all gonna make me sad. But Awakenings, which I love, and I almost killed my cat with the boxes. Don't kill your cat with your boxes of DVDs. 